And every once in a while, I can nudge her in the morning and say, we got to go. She said, can I just be absent this morning? So y'all will be seeing my wife. She will be coming. Amen. Uh, I gave her a pass this morning. Amen. 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 Meet me over in the gospel according to Mark chapter number five. Um, I just got a little bit I want to share with you. And uh, I'm going to share, share with you this. This is just how God has prompted me to do things. So when we get to the word, we stand in reverence of his word. Amen. And not in reverence of man, but in reverence to the word of God. Mark chapter five. We're going to look in verse number 21 and the Bible declares and I'm reading this out of the New King James Version the Bible declares now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side a great multitude gathered to him and he was by the sea verse 22 says and behold one of the rulers of the synagogue came Jairus by name and when he saw him he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. <clears throat> Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now if you jump down to verse 35, 35 says, And while he was still speaking, some came from the rulers of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. If I can for a few minutes just use as a subject, I just want to use this simple thing. Your delay is not your denial. Yeah. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. A change is coming. Yeah. All right. All right. May I receive this. Father, speak now. All of you are none of me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. When we look at this passage of scripture, we look in chapter 5 itself. What we find here is Jesus on his ministry journey is now going through doing some incredible type of healing. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness? Amen. Because if we look in the first verse of this, we find that Jesus went across and healed a man that was full of le legions, demons, uh, legions of demons that he had on the inside of him. Matter of fact, it was so bad that the man was isolated on an island all by himself. Yeah. Because I need you to know that when demons decide they want to run loose, demons will tear up everything yeah. that does not have a power to make it back up and sit down. Are you Hallelujah. with me? Hallelujah. And so Jesus went over and ain't it amazing that what Jesus did, not only did he go over, but he didn't touch the man or anything, but he spoke to the demons. After he asked them, he says, his, he says, he says, what is your name? Uh -huh. And, and they said that my name is Legion because it's many of us. Yeah. And Jesus said, get on up out of there. Isn't it amazing Hallelujah. that not only were the disciples with him, but there were non-believers with him also simply because when Jesus begins to move, he wants to make sure that he increases the faith of the believer, mm. but that he'll also be able to make some believers out of a non-believer. Are you with me? And so now you find that what he did was he healed this man of the demons. Hallelujah. Now we find that there was so much controversy going on because the non-believers now wanted to complain because of where he made the demons go. Yes. Isn't it amazing? We have some, can I just see myself? Is that right? We had some greedy folk that was worried about the swine, the pig. They were worried about the bacon and the sausage. So they was mad that he told them to go into the pigs, and the pigs jumped over. They, all of that meat just gone to waste because you want to put deep. Come on here, somebody. So when he moved from that particular spot, the Bible says that he went over to the other side. Now, he got in the boat with the disciples, and he went on over to the other side. And when he gets here, here it is. He's met by one of the rulers of the synagogue. Now, this man here had some status. He, he was the man that made sure that things in the temple and the synagogues ran well. So, in other words, he had some status quo. Is that all right? He had some status. 
Now, isn't it amazing that when you are hard pressed on every side, yes. it doesn't matter about your image and what people think about you when you have to reach out and ask God for some help. Because I want you to know that this man here, here it was, this man, this ruler, when he heard that Jesus was coming, the Bible says that not only did he go to him, but how he approached him, he approached him in a submissive position. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? He's, he so many of us approach Jesus like he's our homeboy. Yes, hallelujah. And you can't approach Jesus like he's your homie. You got to approach him like he is the authority figure yes, yes. of everything that we are. Hallelujah. And so it says that Jarius fell down on his knees. Watch. But he didn't just fall on his knees, but he fell at his feet. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? Yes. I remember the Bible tells us that when we have our cares that we have to cast them, we have to cast them at the foot of the cross. Are you with me? And even though it wasn't a cross there, yet the Savior himself would eventually go to the cross, but the power wasn't on the cross. The power was on the feet. I wish I had somebody in here this morning. So now the Bible tells us that Jarius went to Jesus and he fell down and he made his petition known. Yes. This is what I want you to listen to. He had enough faith to understand he had never laid eyes on Jesus, Hallelujah. but yet he had heard of some things that he was doing. Watch this. Isn't it amazing that you have never seen him, yeah. but yet and still when he came in, it was enough about Jesus for you to understand yeah. that he was everything that you heard he was yeah. when you laid eyes on him. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yeah. What am I trying to say? You can't call yourself a Christian and when people lay eyes on you, they look at you like a heathen or a demon. Amen. But rather when people see you, they should see the light of God coming through you. Yeah. And actually you must be saved. You must be a Christian. Yeah. There's something about you that's different from everybody. Now, I wish I had somebody. Yeah. So now we find that Jesus now is listening to Jarius because Jarius tells him, listen, my daughter's not only sick, but she's near death. Yes. So, so Jarius had to have heard that Jesus had been doing some healing somewhere else. See, the Grove, I want you to understand something. <clears throat> Just because it looked like it's sick, yeah, it, looks like, it, looks it does not mean that it's sick yeah. unto death. Yeah, it looks like, yeah. Just because it don't look like yeah. folks is coming in the house. Yeah. It doesn't mean that this is a permanent situation, yeah. but all it means is this, is that we've got to line ourselves up to where yeah. Jesus is so that he can speak the life that really is in the house. Yeah. we got to speak the life, and as he speaks the life, we've yeah. got to worship him and thank him for what's about to happen even before we see it manifested yeah. in our presence. Yeah. Are you with me? Yes. So it tells us that he, he asked Jesus to come with him. He had to have enough faith. He had to have some evidence. He had to have some proof that Jesus was worthy of it for him to even ask him. Not only that, but he, he humbled himself enough, regardless of what his high position was, yes. to go to someone who had a higher position mm -hmm, and ask him, I need your help. Yes. Not right now, right. but right now. Yes. And so when Jesus heard this, watch it's no different than when, when it's no different than when, when the when the uh, a centurion man came and he asked Jesus. He didn't have no faith. He didn't have nothing. But his his worker was hurt. His worker was sick, and he came to Jesus and said, "I need you to." Jesus said, "Your faith, yeah, yeah, the display of your faith right now has enough for me to heal him, and I ain't got to go there to heal him." What am I trying to say? God ain't got to walk here physically for him to heal the house. But all we've got to do as vessels is accept the healing. Come on, somebody. So Jairus had Jesus follow him. Now, I want you to know that, that, that right now, Jairus has had a sense of urgency. Uh -huh. How many parents we got in here? How many parents we got in here? Now, now you tell me. I get, I get kind of, I talk kind of crazy sometimes. Is that all right? <laughs> and your baby was sick. Would it not be urgent for your baby to get well? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. If your baby was sick, wouldn't you give in everything, throw in everything yes. just to make sure? I've heard some parents say, Lord, take me and not them. Are you listening to me? Because your baby is something that God gave you to take care of. He's given you the authority to raise them up and to do the certain thing. And so now we have this precious, precious thing that we're taking care of. And when they get sick, it hurts us when we can't make them better. Amen. 
chariots knew he couldn't make them better. So what did he do? He went to the one that could make him better, but it took him to have enough faith to go and ask. Are you listening? Yeah. And so as they're on their way, the Bible says that they're on their way. Now they wind up being distracted. Yes, yes. See, but the distraction to Jarius was just a normal, a, a normal Alice thing process, a process to Jesus. Because Jesus in his ministry, he didn't have an orchestrated ministry. His ministry didn't have a schedule on where he was going. His ministry didn't have all of these different things on how he was going to do so. His ministry was, I go where I go, and whatever's going on when I get there, I fix what it is, and I keep on going. I don't have a plan. I don't have a plot. I don't have a scheme. But what I do have is I have a desire to fulfill what the Father has sent me down here to fulfill. So with that being said, if I have to heal on the Sabbath, so be it because it's about my father's business. If I have to go seven days a week and do what man says I ought not do, as long as God has released me to do that, that's what I'm going to do. And so now the Bible says that he runs into a woman that had an issue of blood. Yes, yes. This woman had been bleeding for some 12 years profusely. If we look at it in the medical situation, we will find that this woman should have been dead by the way she was bleeding. Hallelujah. It allowed us to know that not only was she bleeding like that, but she had exhausted all of her funds and her resources on trying to get healed. Amen. But Amen. never was she able to accomplish that. Watch this. But here again, she heard. I wish I had somebody that wanted to pray with me. Here. She didn't see. She didn't even have eyes on evidence, but she heard about a man, Amen. and then she heard that this man was in that side of town, Amen. and then she heard the man was passing through, Amen. and so her mindset says, if only I can get close enough Amen. to touch him. Yes, yes, yes. She didn't even say, let him speak to me. Yes. She didn't even say, I want somebody to catch this faith thing real quick. She didn't say he had to speak to me. She didn't say he had to touch me. She didn't say anything. All she said, if I can get close enough yes. to touch him. Her mind said, if I can touch him, I know I can be healed. I want somebody to catch it. I want somebody to catch it. See the grow. We just need to touch him real quick for us to be healed. I, I want somebody to just reach out right now and just touches him. It's here. The him is just touches him so we can be healed in the name. So so I can only imagine Jarius right now because the Bible says that she touched his garment. Yes. And isn't it amazing? What cracked me up about this was, remember when Jesus left the boat, he had his folks that was with him. But when he got out, now he got a whole bunch of more folks that's with him. Yes, yes. <laughs> I preached the message last week that everybody that's with you is not necessarily with you. We, we, had, some, we had some folks that was rolling just because they was nosy and wanted to see what was happening. We, we had some folks that wanted to get some, get some, get some clarity on if he was what he said he was, and if he could do what he said he could do, but yet, yeah, we still had some skeptics. I want y'all to catch it. Because Cedar Grove, we got some skeptics that's wondering if Cedar Grove is going to fold them or we going to hold them. And I don't know if y'all know, but we holding on to God's unchanging hand because God got better for us in the future than he's had for us in the past. And everybody that thought that we was down and out, everybody that thought that the doors was going to close, everybody that thought that Cedar Grove would not grow no more, they need to understand that all we need to do is reach out and touch his him. All we need to do is profess that he is what he says he is. All we need to do is hold on and have enough faith that he can and will do what he said he will do. So the Bible says when he touched her, when she touched him, isn't it amazing with thousands of people around him, she reached out. Oh, I like to say she wretched. Can I say wretched? Somebody talk to me and say she wretched out. And she touched just the him. Mm -hmm. she, she, touched, she didn't touch him But she touched the him That was attached to him yeah. Yeah. That. She touched the him That was attached to him And the Bible says immediately He felt a surge go through him yeah. And he turned around and said Who touched me yeah. Yeah. Now the disciples was walking with him And saw the things that he was doing And they had the audacity to say All these people around 
How do you know somebody touched you? Yeah. A whole lot of people touched you. Yeah. But for their understanding and for them to really find out who Jesus was, because remember, they had to carry on the ministry after he left, so they had to know every facet of who he was. Can I ask somebody a question in here? Yeah. Has somebody ever touched you and messed up your spirit? Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah. Have, have you ever been when you was in a, a mode of worship and somebody came by and brushed up against you and they just took you by? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when something is unclean comes to touch you in the midst of you in your worship, it will affect who you are for one reason and one reason only, for you to identify that brother. Yeah, yeah. And your prayer at that moment should be, God, do your will. Yeah. Let your will be done. Yeah. Do what you need to do through me so that whatever is on this person, they can be free. Are you listening to me? Yeah. If you don't call it out, guess what it does? It festers and grows. Yeah. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. So as Jesus looked at the lady, what does the Bible say? Watch this. Here we find the submissiveness again. Because she fell on her face at his feet to explain to him what she did. Yeah. And he simply says this, your faith mm -hmm. has healed you. Yes. Instantly, the Bible says immediately when she touched him, the blood dried up. All right, all right. The infirmity dried up. Yes. The sickness dried up. Amen. The illness dried up. Yes. The reason for depression dried up. Are you listening? Yes. Yes. And now we think about Jerry's, we're like, hold on a minute, Jesus. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be rolling with me to go check on my daughter. Yes. Now you stopping to talk to some woman. Yes. What that woman is you talking to? I need you over there and you stopping right here. Yes. yes. Do y'all remember when Mary and Martha called Jesus? Yes. And they told him that Lazarus was sick. Yes, hallelujah. And Jesus spoke a word. Watch. The Bible says he was delayed two more days coming, but he spoke a word. He said, This sickness yes. is not unto death. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? Listen. Jesus will speak the miracle mm. before he arrives at the spot to perform yes. the miracle. Yes. Because when he speaks it, it happens instantly. Yes. And then it all depends on how we receive it and how we operate. All right. That we see how long it takes for us to see the manifestation yes. of the miracle that he performed before he even got there. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. He spoke that. The woman that had the daughter that was demon possessed. He spoke that, the Canaanite woman. He spoke to her. He said, your faith has made your daughter healed. Go home, your daughter's healed. Are you listening? Even when he used Elijah, he used Elijah to speak to the woman that was about to die. Elijah told her, make me something first. And after you make me a morsel of bread, then make some for you and your son. And then what happened was she thought she was about to die. The Bible says that her, her oil and her flour or whatever never ran out. Why? Because she had enough faith in the man of God that came to her, that spoke life into her situation. And so now she had better than she had before. So we find now that Jarius is sitting here. The Bible don't say what he's doing. But I can only imagine he didn't got impatient. Amen, amen. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Cedar, don't get impatient. Mm -hmm. don't, don't get it. The Bible says, to, to don't grow weary in well-doing. Yes. So if you ain't doing well, then you can get impatient. Hallelujah. But as long as you're doing good, know that God, <laughs> <laughs> he sees you, yes. but sometimes he won't release it until he knows that you're ready for the release. Yes. Huh? So, so listen, so now we get to the place where Darius is looking and to add injury to insult, while Jesus is speaking to the woman, somebody from Darius' house come and say, your daughter's dead. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'd have flipped out real quick yeah. like that. Yeah. I'd have lost all my vision. Yeah. I'd have yeah. lost all my common sense. Yeah. I'd have lost the sense that I put on land with. Yeah. I'd have lost everything. Yeah. Are you with me? But the Bible clearly says that Darius heard this, mm. but Jesus jumped in. And now Jesus is saying, come on. Hallelujah. Let's go on to the house. Mm. But remember something. If Jesus declares it in the atmosphere first, yes. what did he tell him? He says, you want, he wanted him to lay hands on him. But Jesus sat there and said this. He says, as soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid. Amen. Only believe. Only believe what? Hallelujah. Only believe that I have answered your request. Yes. By healing your daughter, even though you don't see it right now. Yes. 
Are you listening? Yes. Sometimes God has got to heal the situation. Yes. Before he, I, I gotta say, if you give your situation to the situator, you will find out that your situation has already been situated. Yeah. So all you need to do is just give him a situation of praise, yeah. knowing that he is faithful and just to do exactly what he says. Yeah. So now he takes the ruler, he takes him, Jarius, and he moves on and goes to the house. But well, watch this, I found this to be very interesting. They said in the word that there was some professional. <laughs> that there were some professional mourners that was at the end of the trip that you get people to come to a funeral crying and don't even know who they are that they cry about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know in the spiritual realm there are some professional church records? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we talk about it? Yeah, yeah. There are some people that have been sent out mm. by the enemy himself yes. to seek and wreak havoc mm. on the churches. Why? Because yeah. they would rather the church fall so the enemy can have his way. But I declare that the Bible says that wherever there are two or three yes, yes. gathered together, yes. touching and agreeing yes. on any one thing, yes. that he would be in the midst. Yes. So, so watch this. So everything was happening, but yet when he got to the house, they had professional mourners. But Jesus says, everybody stay out here yes. except for the three that he chose right. of his disciples. Yes. Watch, I want you to catch it. He chose his three. Yes. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. Yes. And then when they went in the room, it was just his three mm. and the mother and the father, yes. which made, not including Jesus, it made five. Yes. And we know the number five is what? It's the number of grace. Number five is number. So he allowed grace to walk into the room. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Yes. And when he got into the room, he reached down, he looked at the girl, and he told her, he said, get up. Now watch, he had already spoken in the atmosphere, and when he got there, all he did was confirm what he spoke because he told her to get up. And when she got up, the Bible says she got up and began to walk around. Now watch this. The reason why he only took the three disciples and he took the mother and the father is because you don't need no negativity in a situation where God is trying to show you the power and the move of his hand. Are you listening to me? Because negative people, enough negative people can influence you to not believe as Jesus said believe. All it takes is a negative seed for you not to believe the power. Hallelujah. So what he did was he had her rise up. What am I trying to say to you, Cedar? All I'm trying to say to you is this. God has already sent the word into the atmosphere yes. that Cedar Grove will live and not die. He's already sent the word in the atmosphere that you will grow, but you will grow expeditiously according to your position of sacrifice to him. Yes. I need you to understand God cannot add to you until you are ready for him to add to you. Yes. But if you can't maintain the growth, he's not going to allow you to grow. But the moment we get into the submissive position, the moment we, we make our request known to him, the moment that we say, God, we need healing in the church. God, we need deliverance in the church. God, we need your hand to move in the church. God, let your spirit rest, rule, and reign in the church. The moment that we get to that place and we're sincere about it, then God will send it through the airways and he will allow it to happen and all we've got to do is rejoice then for what he's about to do later because if he said it, that's so. Are you with me? Hey Amen. If we weren't in this covertivity, I'd tell you to slap your neighbor high five and say, just stay in the position. Give him an air high five anyway. Just tell him, we say that, stay there. Yeah. And have some faith knowing that God has already spoken. Yeah. Now it's time for us to line up to what he has spoken yeah. so we can see the manifestation of it. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. So in it all, watch this. Have you made your petition known? Hallelujah. Have you sincerely yeah. made it known? Or did you just do it walking past? Did you just do it just, just casually? Yeah. Have you made your petition known? Yes. yes. Are you with me? Yes. Watch this. It takes us to work now. Yes. In order for us to reap the reward later. Yes. Because I've never seen somebody get a paycheck for not working. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Your benefits come from your faithful servanthood. Yes. Yes. And then you can show benefits. Are you with me? Yes. A job makes you go through a probational period yes. before it releases you benefits. Yes. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. You are in a probational period right now, Hallelujah. but God has already written your benefits. Hallelujah. 
And the only way that we're going to be able to receive the benefits yes. is if we get on the same page, yes. if we have the same mindset, yes. and if we believe that God has already spoken the healing, yes. that he's already spoken the deliverance, yes. that he's already spoken. Watch this. Because it's time for him to restore the joy. Yes. It's time for him to restore the faith. Yes. It's time for him to restore the hope. Yes. It's also time for him to restore and reestablish his authority. Yes. Are y'all with me? And I just need you to know all it takes for you to do is believe what you ask for. Because he told Jerry, it's this. Do not be afraid. Yes. Only believe. Yes. See the Grove, I tell you, delay don't mean denial. It simply means this. Don't be afraid. Yes. Just believe. Yes. Because every so once in a while. God has got to strip you down to nothing. Yes. So when he builds you back up, you know it's him and not you. Yes. The other thing I want you to remember is this. When we said that everybody that's with you is not necessarily with you, yes. sometimes God has got to remove the weight before he can allow you. Yes. I feel you pushing me. I see you over there. I see you. I see you. I'm trying to be nice on this person. Amen. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. Amen. Y'all tell him I'm trying to be nice this Sunday. To, next Sunday, I can't tell you this. I'm going to be too nice. This Sunday, be a little nice. Praise the Lord. Amen. I hear him. I hear him. I hear him. My foot is starting to move. Amen. Getting a little bit excited. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> the drummer looking at me like, what? <laughs> I'm good, brother. For real. I'm good. I'm going to let y'all loose in a minute, though. Not today. Yeah, amen. He's trying to figure out what I'm talking about. I can really talk later. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but I want you to also remember this. We can't be stuffed up if we really want the Spirit of God to move. Right. Amen. We've got, the Bible lets us know that laughter does us so good. Yeah. We got to laugh sometime. We, yeah. we got to have a good time. Yeah. Everything can't be so serious. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Because we'd be so holy that we miss the move. Yeah. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Listen to me. God is up to something. Yeah. And watch this. He's not just up to something in Cedar Grove. He's up to something in the entire body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. There are yeah. people falling off yeah. because they lost hope. Yes, yes. There are people falling off because they've lost members. Yeah. I told a church in Compton, I told them, I said, if if I came to church and it wasn't nothing but a chair, a dead roach, and a broken window, <laughs> we gonna still have church. <laughs> because when the Bible says if you're faithful over a few things, yes, yes. if you'll make you ruler over many, yes. it just takes you to be faithful. Yes, yes. Are you listening? Yes. And let me share this with you. He can do things in smaller numbers just as well as he do things in big numbers. Because big don't make you mega. But mega is in your mindset and in your faith. Are you with me? Jesus had 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jesus had 12. We got like 15. Are you listening? We got 12 and 3 on Lego. All right. On credit, we like the Lakers. We got a we got a bench. <laughs> we got a bench that can come in and keep the game going. Are you listening? So we're not worried about it. All we're gonna do is stay focused. Are you listening? The Bible declares that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But I want to leave you with this passage of scripture, Proverbs three five and six. It says, trust in the Lord yeah. with all of your heart yeah. and lean not into thy own understanding. Yes. But in all of thy ways, yes. acknowledge him yes, Lord. and he will direct your path. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. I don't know who we've been acknowledging yes. in the whole body of Christ, yes. but I declare today that we acknowledge him yes, Lord. and that we walk in the path that he has set for us. Yes. Because I need you to know something. He's got greater I like to say he's got greater later. Yes, Lord. But it takes us right now to be faithful. Yes, Lord. Are you listening? Yes. Do not be afraid. Yes. Only believe. Because your delay yes. is not your denial.
that will remind you this. This is a time where we like to extend the invitation. I don't like to say open the doors of the church because the doors of the church have never been closed. So we like to extend the invitation to someone who may not know Christ, want to accept him as your personal savior for the first time, or you may just want to rededicate your life. If that's you, you can just simply raise your hand. And then we also have a call for someone that may be looking to join. I believe everyone here is members. Amen. Looking for someone that may want to join if this is you. As far as your growth, I'm going to tell folks, get in now. Yes, yes. Get in now. Don't jump on board when, I, when the train is moving, yes. moving, moving. Yes. And then start claiming what you did. You ain't did nothing. Set out. That's right. Amen. That's right. If that is you, just raise your hand. Amen. We see that there is none while there is still room at the cross. And we do know that this is first Sunday. Yes. So give me a little. The blood that Jesus shed.
to them what was going to happen. And then after his explanation, he allowed for them to break bread with him. And as we pray over our elements, there is something that I want you to understand. That when the Bible declares that a man ought not take this unworthy, it simply means that there are times when we sin and don't realize we sin. The thought that you had, the verb that you said, something that you said to someone, not realizing it was offensive. If it offended your brother, then that means you have sinned. So what I'd like to do is just to make sure that, that none of us take this unworthily, that we just bow our heads and say the simple prayer of forgiveness. Say, Father, forgive me for all of my unrighteousness, for sins of omission and commission, things that I don't even know about. Forgive me, God. And then show me the error of my way so that I will not sin against it. Bless it now, God, to receive these elements. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So the Bible declared that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, that he took the bread and he blessed it. He took the cup and he blessed it. And he allowed them to know that these are sacred. And when you take up this, as often as you do it, remember him. Amen. So as we stand and come, let's take up our elements. And then we will, uh, uh, we will commune together. Amen. <laughs>